Hello, in this episode we're going to look at how to create a character creation screen for an MMO uh, server and today we're going to focus on the appearance information so that is that we're going to be changing the way the meshes appear so we're going to have a list of meshes that um, the client will keep and the server will say which ones of those to load right so the way we're going to do that is through a map of data so basically we're going to have um, a set of keys and values where the key will specify what mesh is uh, that we're looking at and the value will tell for example the array index or the string name of uh, the mesh to load so for example um, we'll have something like head as a key and we'll tell it to say load style one from your, your meshes um, as usual the all of the code to do this will be available in this blog post so it will cover all of the C++ code and the blueprint code codes that need to be implemented and in this particular example we're going to be using the stylized modular character asset pack uh, but you don't need this pack this says um, you know I just liked it I wanted to try it out so that's what I'm using but the approach itself is quite universal so you can use it on whatever you want I'll demonstrate that shortly and all of the server code so all of the java code is available on github and uh, if you're interested in you know the latest commit which will include this information it's available here uh, it's not that big uh, there's not much changes required um, i could go through it separately to be honest um, so yeah first of all let's dive into a small demo of what it is that we're doing to see if it's for you uh, so what we have is basically a uh, the new screen here where we've got the create new character and we can now modify the appearance of this character so if we give it a name we click this button the character is preloaded uh, with the appearance that we set this information is stored on the server and it's passed to the client and if we click login uh, there's our character with a new appearance right so that's what it is that we're going to be doing. Uh, like I said, the approach is universal. So for example, uh, I was playing around with UE 4.26. So this one is UE 5, so it's com fully compatible with that. And um, this is UE 4.26. Um, and if I, this is again using the very same server. Uh, the C++ code is the same, but the blueprints are a bit different because we're loading different characters. So if we log in, you'll be you'll see the same sort of screen, and we can choose between two meshes. So for example, I choose this guy. Uh, if I click create, there's this one, and then if I create a, another character, and let's make him look like this. Oops. Okay, and then we've got the two characters. So, I mean, this is a test code, so I wasn't putting much validations here. So you can see even when I click this button, uh, the other menu doesn't disappear. Uh, that's minor. Uh, so that, that is what we're making. And uh, basically these meshes, uh, they're basically just from Mixamo assets. So uh, I think maybe one is Leonard, the other one's Crypto. Um, so basically this approach will work with whatever it is that you're doing because the principles will remain the same uh, the payload will be different but the principles of how you take the information from the client you send it to the server and then you pass it back to the client whenever it needs it and then you map it to your needs so that that's kind of what we're going to be going through okay so we can close this guy let's just make sure it's turned off um okay so from the previous videos, you might be familiar with a couple of widgets that we've created. So there was uh, the character component, character selection, and create character widget. So all of these are sort of related to after your login. So we're not gonna be touching the login or the register widget because that stays the same. So perhaps uh, the first thing that we'll look at is the character selection widget. So this is the screen where you have the create new character button, delete and login. Deletes, we haven't covered that yet. Uh, so the main two things that we're going to be looking at is the create new character and the login. 
Uh, before we do that, let's have a look at the constructor. So the constructor is run when this widget is loaded. And basically this stuff is the same from before. Uh, what we've added is uh, a new feature to spawn the actor for the, you know, to display the mesh basically, what it is that we're uh, looking at. So to do this, I created a new, um, new blueprint for the third person. So basically when you create a project, you're gonna have a third person character blueprint. I've created a new blueprint, which was a copy of this one. And after I've um, downloaded the asset pack, um, you, you get given this blueprint basically, right? Uh, this is not sort of good enough um, because it doesn't have a lot of stuff. So that's why I prefer to use the uh, third person uh, blueprint. But this one has a lot of information, for example, for toggling between um, the meshes. So for example, next skeletal mesh. So uh, this is implemented and I just copied these functions over to uh, my new blueprint. Okay, so in the constructor, we simply load in that blueprint. So we spawn the mesh, but immediately we set it invisible. We also set the uh, mesh as a variable and we do this just so it's easy to access, right? Uh, the other thing that we've done is we've introduced a new variable for the appearance info and we populate this whenever we get the new characters, right? So for example, uh, let's see, notify get character success and we load in the characters there, clear all the data, add character to list and yeah so there should be a function perhaps okay so uh, that's covered a little bit later so we'll cover that separately um, just FYI it's a new character selector so we populate this information whenever we uh, actually select the character because at the beginning I'll just sort of show you uh, when we log in we don't actually see the character right so one uh, the the appearance info is not loaded because you haven't selected one of the characters it's only after you select the character that we um, load the appearance info uh, the appearance info is already in the variables it's actually within the character information so for example this account characters is an array of account character base and the base variable already contains the variables uh, then we also have a selected character, so account characters, uh, this is of type account character, so by nature it will have the appearance info. Uh, but to make it even easier to access, I've put it as a separate variable. Okay, so let's have a look at what happens when we create a new character. As before, we will load the blueprint to create a new character, so we will load up this widget. Uh, what we've added is a constructor to that widget to take in the character mesh. So uh, we just basically provide the character mesh that we spawned here. Uh, it will not have any appearance data loaded or it will be whatever it is basically the defaults. And we also give self to uh, as a reference to the character widget. The reason we do that is because we'll set the visibility to collapsed. So basically we'll hide this view so that the user can't interact with it. So that's the reason we give the self. Uh, so, okay, so after we've added to the viewport, we can now start looking at this. So this menu is now loaded. Uh, what we've added here are a couple of buttons. So these buttons will toggle the appearance information and there's another button here to toggle the gender, so for example, male, female. Uh, we can have a quick look into what these functions do, uh, but it's not too much. The, the logic will actually sit inside the uh, character blueprint. Uh, so we will simply toggle the, uh, the hair, for example, here, and we will toggle the face appearance here, and we'll toggle the gender. So the gender looks a bit bigger because we're also setting the text of this button. So it will say male to begin with. So we initialize with that value and then we'll toggle to female um, when you click it, for example, right? And it will toggle back and forth. Um, the indexes don't need to be stored in the variables here uh, because I've stored them in the character blueprint class. 
but you could do it here instead so that's completely optional um, okay so that's basically how we toggle the appearance of the mesh but this doesn't actually save anything so we need to now look at how do we uh, store this information and the way we would do that is through clicking the create button so if we click create uh, the first thing that we'll do is pre-populate the appearance info so all this does really like I could have put it right here uh, but then it will make this blueprint look a bit bigger but we're just simply pre-populating this appearance info um, which is simply a map of strings right so uh, we've added a new variable here and let's have a look at what this does so it's not too complicated I guess uh, it will look bigger so bear in mind I've only implemented the uh, hair and the face uh, for each sort of segment of the mesh that you want to modify you'll have to add uh, a couple of extra points so um, here I've just got a branch to say is male so I am keeping the gender uh, variable locally and if it's a male I'm basically attaching the um, some values to this um, map so basically here I literally set that uh, the gender is male and then the rest of it can be taken via the uh, blueprint class so for example here I add the hair index uh, and the way I do that is to get the character mesh I get the hair index male and then I basically translate that to a string because this is just a, an integer value and I store that so uh, if I open up a notepad oops what we do in here is doing gender male uh, hair one face one so this is like a, a brief example of what it is that it can do um, and it's fully customizable right so uh, as I added my keys here you can add whatever you, you need right um, this hair index male will be um, unique or a constraint of the stylized package uh, I could even have a translator for that right uh, I don't have to use the same index um, arrays that they do so you basically change these parts to whatever you need them to, to be to match your um, approach and that's all we do right um, we just have one set for the male and one set for the meme female and the reason for that is because they have a different index for uh, this data right uh, it could have been universal to be honest but that's fine if they want to toggle between the two um, that works just as fine right uh, so that's all we needed to do really uh, because if we go back to the event graph we've uh, modified the C++ code to take in the appearance info and all of that is then handled for you right uh, we basically call the create new character we feed in the appearance data we've modified the server code to accept this uh, new map of strings we just simply store it so now what you'll have to uh, consider is basically whenever you get the characters you're gonna basically receive this same set of key value pairs and then you'll need to basically create a translator to map that to whatever meshes that you want to draw okay so I, I literally don't think that there's any other changes that were made here uh, so that's basically it uh, create new character let's see create character success remove this widget so part of the uh, remove widget yeah there's the, the selection screen so like I say we provided self to the constructor here uh, we simply set the visibility back to visible we, we want the uh, selection screen to become visible again and we will uh, destroy or hide uh, do whatever works for you uh, the create character widget okay so I, I believe that is it the rest of it is the same as what it was in the previous version okay so if we go back to this screen so now we've had a look at what happens when we create a new character uh, we will want to have a quick look 
at what happens when we click on the character and this actually happens within the character component widget so we populate this uh, character component widget whenever we're loading the characters so let me have a look uh, should be get character success so we get given all of these characters and we then draw these widgets for each of the characters right so we have a, an array of characters and for each character we add in a button specific to that character right so they have this uh, information so this is probably a, i think this is different so before we used to just uh, get the character and get the text and then set the text of the button to the character name we now just pass in the full character uh, variable and the reason we do that is because we might want to populate other information as well so not just the character name right in this case we also want to feed in uh, the selected information for the appearance information All right so um, there's not much that's changed here literally just this little box it used to say set text and now it sets character and inside here uh, it will be similar so the the layout of the button is the same uh, probably within the constructor so you can see here uh, event construct we set the text of the uh, a button to the character you just basically break the uh, account character into its field we take the name and we basically feed that into the button right so uh, just to clarify this is the button and it'll have some text in the middle and it will contain the character name so nothing too much here okay so when we're selecting the character all we do is um, to be honest, I could have used a reference here as well, so I could have passed in the uh, character selection uh, widget as a variable here. Uh, but we just simply set the new character selected and we give in the character that we have, right? So we don't even break it down, we just give the full character back. So all this is, like, this this is all of the code, it's not, it's not much to it. We just uh, pass the data back and forth. That's pretty much what programming is about, I guess. Um, so if we go back on here this is the function that we've called right so we call a uh, new character selected function from within the character component widget which is this button so this button will call this function and this will uh, set all of the appearance information right so we have one input uh, so you can define it uh, here uh, which is the character input we set it as a local variable selected character and well to be honest we, we don't really need to set the appearance info as it belongs here but uh, that's fine um, so we enable the login button we take in this information and we're now going to start passing the appearance information in order to decide which meshes that we need to load right so for example um, I look at the appearance info and I expect there to be a um, key called gender. So the gender value will go out into this branch, so it's just an if statement. And if true, we, we're basically, uh, well, we, we, we get the male aspect. If, uh, if it's equal to male, then we know it's male. So we populate this guy as true. Um, we also set the character mesh now to match this is male right so the drawing of the mesh itself happens on the character blueprint so what we're doing here is we're uh, getting the information from the character base so from the server uh, we're passing it we're sort of translating it uh, if the translation needed to be made in this case not really and then we're telling the mesh to load specific values. So some of this will be specific to the character blueprint that you're uh, doing. So basically we set a local variable inside the character mesh. In fact, I'll just show you so you can kind of see it happening. Uh, third person blueprint. So there's gonna be a couple of variables here. So for example, is male, you can see it's a public variable. So uh, this guy can set it. And we just set this variable to true so that way 
this blueprint knows uh, which indexes to start looking at, right? And just like that, we go on to the next one. So for example, here, uh, we find a value uh, with a key called face, right? If it found it, uh, we then get the value and we set it to either the faces index or the faces, uh, uh, sorry, the, the faces index male or faces index female. And again, we just set this value within the character mesh. So I'll probably demonstrate this in Postman actually. So if I log in as this, I get a key, get. So perhaps I get my characters here. Okay, so here we are, right? So we don't keep indexes for female or male hair values, right? We just keep one index because we know that the gender is set here. So that's why we're able to reuse it here, right? So we, we only store one index and it's either going to be uh, faces index female or faces index male uh, that belong to the character mesh. Uh, and again, right, so I'll just quickly show you. This is all that we're doing, right? And this is fully customizable. And this is why this approach will work on basically any method that you choose to go for. So for example, when I've shown it working on the UE 4.26, I had completely different payload, right? I, I was just toggling between two characters and I just say character mesh is either crypto or Leonard, right? If you had five different meshes, you know, you'll have five different value options. Uh, if you had a hundred uh, of these, ideally you'd sort of have some automated way of doing this, but worst case scenario, you have a hundred if statements basically. And that's what it is, right? So we do the same for both the hair and face. And I also have a update mesh uh, function, which basically forces uh, the blueprint to reload the meshes, right? So you've configured the indexes, uh, but it doesn't necessarily change at runtime. Uh, so like this function will basically update it. And the reason is because uh, typically the meshes are loaded on a constructor. So this is where you say, okay, this mesh has this appearance. Uh, so just simply toggling the indexes wouldn't necessarily modify the appearance. So in this case, you will have a function which says, okay, load this mesh. Um, I can quickly show that as well, but it's gonna look a little bit bigger. Okay, so there is update mesh. And again, it's checking if it's male. If it's male, you load uh, the values from uh, the male indexes. If it's female, you load from the female indexes. And you basically get all of the meshes and you set the skeletal mesh for, um, well, for your character, right? So you, you basically get the chest, hands, uh, faces, legs. So basically you iterate over each one of the meshes and if you look at how does it look here it is so you, you basically have all of these components that are variable um, and that's how it's a bit different to other meshes i suppose okay so where were we so now we've set uh, the appearance information and we've basically told the mesh to load them so now we know that uh, the appearance is there on this screen. So basically there'll be a character which will sort of appear round about the middle and he will look as we need it to look. Um, you've also set the character in the variable here. So selected character. Uh, so you'll be able to proceed, right? You, you, you're able to click the button to log in. So let's have a look at what we do there. On button login, uh, what we want to do is we, we want to change the map, right? So right now we're on the login map and we want to change to some other map. I'm going to do this by using the third person example map. Uh, but before I can change, these uh, local variables are only accessible in this class, right? 
So we need to pass some of this information to, um, you know, essentially the global variables, right? And the way we can do that is via the uh, game instance. So at the beginning, uh, in the previous episode, I created this class, game instance settings. And all I had to do, I, I don't think I'm using character mesh, actually. I can probably delete this. Uh, we can do that later. Um, we just simply populate this appearance information. Uh, and the reason I think I couldn't use stylized third person is I'm not sure the map itself will uh, have contact, context of what it is. So uh, this class, oh no, no, never mind. Uh, that's not true. So if I was to pass in the base character, so this one, account character base, they wouldn't be able to read it because I've, uh, in the C++ code, uh, the parent is a widget class. So I, I should really make that struct to be global. So it wouldn't recognize it. Uh, that's partially why I'm passing the appearance info. You could pass in uh, the entire mesh, uh, but that would probably be too much, right? Like, um, I think we just need some core pieces of information. So I go back here. So we've set the appearance info, make sure it's set to public so other classes can see them. Uh, we cast a game instance, so we get the game, game instance, cast a game instance settings, and we simply set the appearance info to what this variable here is. And with that, we can just open the level. And that's basically it, because uh, once this le level is open, I've added some uh, code into, again, the, the character blueprint to load uh, information from the game instance settings when it is constructed. Um, let's see if I can find it. Load character from settings. So at the very beginning, I'm going to execute this function, load character from settings, which um, gets the game instance, cast it to uh, game instance settings, and you basically load in the appearance and you set them as a local variable. So you can see that here. This can be private, that's fine. Um, and then you basically run through very similar method that we saw in character selection widget, which was when you select a new character. So basically it's very similar to this functionality here. Uh, in fact, it might be very well the same. The differences would be that instead of having a reference to the character mesh, it will be this character mesh, right? Uh, so I think we can probably see that here. Yeah, you're just setting the direct variables over here, right? So set faces uh, index mail, for example, that'll be one of the variables in this list. So it's just setting itself uh, in order to basically change the appearance, right? Um, got a debug string in there, that's fine. And uh, yeah, just call it update mesh and that is it. And let's just uh, double check where we call this load character from settings. Okay, so I just do that at the very end of the constructor. So uh, when we begin play, um, it attaches all of the meshes to the body. So basically, uh, just by having them here, they're, they're not necessarily applied correctly. Some of them could be floating. So uh, again, this was part of the stylized pack. I, I didn't change this. Uh, and then at the end, I'm um, pre-configuring what these meshes actually look like because at the beginning, they'll be just set to default values. And yeah, that's it. That, that, that will complete the full flow. So. Let's just, oops. Let's have a look. So like I'll go through all of the steps. We create the new character. We uh, make this mesh visible. It was pre-populated in the previous screen. We change uh, the indexes for the meshes that it can load. Uh, likewise here, so for example, let's go with this guy. We 
when we create the new character, we take the indexes that we've set here and we add it to the payload of the create character API. So when we create it, uh, they're populated. On this screen, um, we call the get characters. So we effectively call uh, this API. This API returns some information. The new payload includes appearance information and it will give us indexes of the meshes that we want to load uh, and other information. I would actually advise to use strings here instead of just indexes, but maybe for speed it might be easier to use indexes. Um, and when you click the login button, um, you take this information, you put it into the game instance settings, so you, you make that a global variable, and you make it accessible to your other maps. So when you click login, you load in the new map, uh, your character blueprint is also loaded. In the constructor of the blueprint, you check, is there some settings I need to preload uh, in your game instance settings? There is, so you pull that information and you apply it to the mesh. And then you have, so th there you go. Uh, you've got now a customized character, uh, which is um, loaded from the server, and that's it. If you've got any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, good luck. Cheers, guys.